Today's review is sponsored by the new hit movie, Kill Bill and Ted. The crossover nobody asked for, but everybody wants. And just to be clear, I'm on Team Bill and Ted. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Eaten Alive, 1976. Hi. <laughs> so, as you can see, I'm still uh, dog-sitting Georgia for a couple weeks, uh, and because I am the most professional person on YouTube, uh, so uh, I apologize ahead of time for not being in my usual location, and I apologize for the Georgia cameos every now and again. But, uh, psh, might as well make a video for you guys, so let's get on with the review. Bye, Georgia. I talked about the 1980 Italian cannibal eaten alive a few videos back, so now I gotta talk about the 1976 killer crocodile slasher movie eaten alive, because I absolutely love that movie. <laughs> Eaten Alive was the second horror movie directed by the late, great Toby Hooper. It came out two years after Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it has some spillover from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because Marilyn Burns also stars in this movie, and she's once again getting beaten up by a hillbilly. My God! What are you doing in here? Get, seen, get out of here! I seen it! And while it's not on the same level as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there aren't many horror movies that are, it's still very well done and very entertaining. The movie combines backwoods hillbilly slasher movies with an animal attack movie. We have this guy Judd, who's the owner of the Starlight Hotel, which is built in the middle of this vast swampland. Now, Judd is insane, and also has a pet crocodile. This being a hotel that's built in the middle of swampy nowhere, not too many people stay at the Starlight Hotel. It doesn't help that whenever somebody does stay at the hotel, Judd murders them and then feeds them to his pet crocodile. <laughs> It's a very simple movie. Our cast of colorful characters come to this hotel only to get killed and eaten by a crocodile. And the movie takes this simple idea and runs with it, making for an entertaining little horror movie. We've got a good cast in this movie. The man Judd, played by Neville Brand, is a fun horror movie villain. He has these insane ramblings. When people die, he seems to be enjoying their deaths. And he views crocodiles as these magical beings that cannot die unless you kill them. You know, he told me, he says, he says, you know, them things ain't nobody knows how old. They don't never die. <laughs> oh, oh, sir, 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 that thing is dangerous. But it's fun to see who else pops up in this movie, especially if you're a grindhouse and horror fan like me. Obviously, there's Marilyn Burns from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We got Mel Ferrer, Stuart Whitman, Roberta Collins from The Big Doll House and Death Race 2000, Kyle Richards, who plays the little girl, who also went on to play Lindsay Wallace in Halloween, Carolyn Jones, the original Morticia Adams, who plays Miss Maddie, and of course, an early appearance by Robert Englund as a guy named Buck. And he likes to fuck. Name's Buck. I'm raring to fuck. So, we've got a good cast of characters. Judd is essentially the main character, but we have all these other characters who come to the hotel, and they all have interesting stories, or these little quirks. Marilyn Burns plays Faye, a wife and mother. Her family shows up to the Starlight Hotel, and we don't know their whole backstory, but we're given little hints to what their family life is like. 
She wears a wig. Her husband is clearly insane. There are moments where he seems more crazy than Judd. Hi, Georgia. No, you just gouged my eye out. She just gouged my eye out. No, wait a second. <laughs> no, 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 you didn't do that. No, you didn't. Oh, you did, you did. Due to irresponsible pet ownership, their little dog Snoopy ends up getting eaten by the crocodile. Georgia does not approve. And neither do I. But one thing leads to another, resulting in Marilyn Burns once again getting bagged and tied up by a hillbilly. <laughs> We also have a daughter and father who show up at the hotel because they're looking for his missing daughter, who was murdered at the beginning of the movie. And Buck eventually shows up with a woman so he can fuck her upstairs, which gives us our nudity for the film. <laughs> So, all these characters who show up to eventually get killed or terrorized all have something interesting going on. We also have Judd's insane ramblings to keep us occupied between the kills. And that's all a good slasher movie needs to do, have interesting things going on between the good stuff so that we can be entertained while waiting for the next kill. At its core, Eaten Alive is a slasher movie. It does fit in both the slasher genre and animal attack genre, but I think it fits more in the slasher genre. Ah! The crocodile does play a big role in this movie, but it does seem more like a gimmick to separate this movie from other slasher movies. And I do not mean that in a negative way. I always welcome when a slasher movie does something that separates it from other slasher movies. <laughs> Eaten Alive does have a small body count, but I do think that sometimes when it comes to slasher movies, a smaller body count can be better, even though I do love my bigger body counts. But when it, you have a smaller body count, the kills can stand out even more. And in Eaten Alive, all the kills stand out. It's just like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Both movies have small body counts, and all the kills are memorable. <laughs> There is an element of cheese in this movie, and that's mostly because of the crocodile. This is a low-budget movie, it was around $520,000, and for its budget, the crocodile does what it needs to do. It looks rubbery, but that adds to the charm. It's cheesy, but effective. And it's especially funny because the crocodile seems to change size depending on what it needs to do. There are moments where the crocodile looks big. <laughs> Then there's a scene where the crocodile goes under the porch to get the little girl, and it's clearly smaller than it was before. <laughs> While that is funny, it also provides us with a unique chase scene. The little girl ends up hiding under the porch, and her mother ends up getting tied up upstairs, and Judd locks the little girl underneath the porch. And this provides some very suspenseful chase scenes. There's a scene where Judd goes under the porch to try and get the little girl. <laughs> then there's the scene where Judd gets the croc under the porch to go after her. 
these make for some claustrophobic chase scenes. It's cramped down there. There's not a lot of places to go. It's the last place where you would want to tangle with a crocodile. Eaten Alive 1976 is my favorite of the Eaten Alive movies. It would make for a good double feature with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It has good elements of both slasher movies and animal attack movies. It has all the right amounts of fun, sleaze, and cheese. It's just a fun little horror movie. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of five. The kills consist of some crocodile chompings, a few good scythe kills, and a good pitchfork kill. It reaches the slasher requirements with a good killer, a decent body count, and a variety of different kills. There's some nudity here with some women's breasts and an ass shot. While I do consider this more of a slasher movie, it does also fall into the animal attack genre. There's plenty of good croc attack scenes. Judd is a fun villain. He has some good crazy ramblings, and he gets all hyped up when he kills people. All the characters are interesting. They have their quirks and backstories that help us care about them. Plus, I get a kick out of seeing who appears in this movie. And the movie has a good grindhouse atmosphere. I'm giving this a 4.5 out of 5. It's a good exploitation horror flick with some quality kills and a rubber crocodile ripping people apart. As always, I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch and support this channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know some of your favorite backwoods hillbilly horror movies. This is the Maniac and Georgia, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. I thought it would only be right to end this movie with a Georgia cameo. Well, thank you. <laughs> the most professional guy on YouTube. <laughs>